Well, that's impressive, right? Well, maybe you're not that impressed. Let's do something that's maybe a little bit more impressive. I want to make a directory called build Xcode. And now, I think you'll be able to see something a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to build inside of Xcode a project file because I'm going to say use a generator for Xcode when you make the make files this time. So now CMake is still running, but what it's going to build is a series of project files that allows me to edit my C files and the other files inside of Xcode. So inside of this directory, I don't have make files. I have this hello cmake.xcode project. And so I can open that on my machine and it'll take a long time for Xcode to load. Uh, but you'll then be able to see that I'm able to build a project inside of Xcode. So what makes this really interesting and compelling is that I can use make files in order to do work uh, on a Linux-based machine only. So on, on a Linux-based machine, I'm able to use make files because those files are the most convenient for building in a command line interface. So we can see here in this uh, project that popped up, the project's called Hello CMake. And I have here the CMake list that I wrote before, Hello CMake, which is the name of the executable, and then main.c. So inside of the source files, I have main.c, and I have pretty printing and all this kind of interesting stuff here. Uh, and I can actually change the name of my executable if I want to, and I'll, I'll do that in a couple of minutes to show you how to do that. Um, so the name of the target, the name of all these other pieces are all now found inside of this really nice command line environment. So if I decided instead that I wanted to write some extra stuff here, I now get the nice pop-ups and code assists that come with using a different kind of a project file. So if I save this, I can build it and it'll run. In fact, I can run it here. And if I pull up, I always forget where. Let's run it one more time. View activate console. There we are. So now if I run one more time, I should see those things pop up. Or maybe I won't. Well, that's one of the interesting things about demo demons is that you don't always get to see uh, when you're doing things on the fly exactly what's going on. I'm not really sure why. Maybe I'm running the wrong. Ah, yep, you have to run the correct executable. Run. There we are. So now we see the output. So previously what I was running was actually just the build process. I wasn't actually running the executable. Hello CMake, CMake for the win. So now if I go back to my terminal, I haven't changed my code. Uh, between these two projects. I just have two different build processes. But if I go back now into my build directory and I run source hello CMake, I still have the old version of my executable. So if I want to see the new version where I changed the code inside of Xcode, I have to rerun make. And so now if I run hello CMake, I get the new output here. So this is a common error that you forget to rebuild uh, if you're using the command line interface. And so don't forget to rerun make. I can also change some aspects of the system. So I can change the name of the project. So I'm going to call this project Hello CMake project. So now in build Xcode, if I want to see the updated name of the project, I have to rerun CMake. So over here now in Xcode, 
the name of my project is going to change when I rebuild. So I'm rebuilding. It's probably going to complain that the name of the project doesn't match, so I'm just going to close that. I'm going to reopen Hello CMake project. So now the project has a different name, even though the executable has the same name. So down here in one of the, the resources, the sources that we're creating is still an executable called Hello CMake. I can change the name of that executable as well. But to do that, I need to be inside of the source directory. And here, I don't want to call it hello CMake as an executable anymore. Let's just call it hello. So now, inside of Xcode, if I rerun my project, it's going to actually regenerate all the information. So here, instead of having a source for something called hello CMake, now the source is for something called hello. And the executable that it creates is for something called hello. So let's look at this inside of uh, the regular build process. So now inside of build with make files, if I just rerun again source hello CMake, that executable still exists. But I want to get the new executable name. So in order to do that, I have to rerun CMake and now rerun make. And so now it has a different target called hello. So now we see something that's a little bit confusing. So if I look now, again, inside of my build directory, inside of the source for my build directory, I see that I have two executables. This little x here means that this file is executable. I have one called hello, and I have one called hello CMake. Well, hello CMake is my old build project. Right, this is the executable that I built before. It's three minutes older than this one that's just called hello. So you can see now why it can get a little bit confusing while you're building your project that you might have five or six different versions of libraries or executables or something. Um, and so we're going to do something that shows why it's so important to have your own separate build directories. So if I wanted to clean up all of these intermediate files and I'd put the files side by side with the source, I might accidentally delete one of my source files. Instead, I'm going to delete everything in my build directory. So ls, or sorry, rm, if I try to do rm build, it's going to complain. It's going to say, oh, you can't remove build because it's directory. So I have to do something that you have to be really careful when you're doing. If you type rm-rf, this says, I want to delete everything recursively, and I want to force. So don't ask me whether I want to delete it or not. So if you want to be a little bit safer, you can take out the F, and it'll just ask you if there are recursive files that you want to build. So now I don't have a build directory anymore, which means that all of the executables are gone. But I can easily recover it by making a directory called build. And I'm going to go straight into that directory. That's what this and and means. So it's going to take me straight into the build directory. So now I'm going to regenerate my make files. I'm going to rerun make. And if I look at the source directory now, I only have this new version of hello. So the old executables went away. I'm a little bit less worried now about um, about creating something and then leaving it sitting around. And this can be especially painful during the debug process that you're actually running an old version of your executable and you don't realize why it's not updating correctly.